Hello everyone, my name is Zach and welcome back to another figure re-review. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look once again at the Super Saiyan, Sun, Super Saiyan 4 Sun Goku from Dragon Ball GT. And as you can see, this guy is already trying to get out of the box, which I hate. The box is probably one of the things that has always given me trouble with this guy, so without further ado... Let's get him out and see how he looks again. Alright, so here we have Super Saiyan 4 Goku standing in his beautiful pinkish red fur. Which should not be pink, it should be actually red. But even Bandai doesn't know the source material that they're getting their figures from. So... Yeah, this guy... Probably one of the best looking figures out there, for sure. Although, there is no shading on the fur, which does suck. But there is some shading here and there on the actual pants, which does work very well. The face looks fairly accurate to the source material, which is awesome. But the chest is a little bit small in my opinion. But with how small the face is, it actually doesn't really matter that much. So, I have no real issues with him whatsoever. I think in terms of aesthetic, this is probably one of the best looking Dragon Ball figures to have out there. It, even if you don't like GT or love it as well. So, if you don't have this figure, I definitely recommend it already just in terms of aesthetic alone. But, I do think he has a couple of issues in terms of the, of the articulation. So, let's get onto that real quick. Again... With the head, you can look down about that far, but you can barely look up. Well, actually, that's much better than I thought. So you can look up pretty decently. One thing that I have an issue with is with the way that the head actually joins together. As you can see, there is already a major gap on mine, and that's always been the case for some reason or another. So my face plates definitely fall apart at sometimes the slightest touch so I will say if you have yours let me know if you have the same issue as me where the face blade falls pretty easily on on your end as well so looking side to side is okay you won't get the best range because you do have the hair blocking it these two strands of hair to the sides do move around so if you want to move them to give you more uh, range and articulation you can definitely do so for the shoulders, give me a second, I'm just moving a couple of things on my end. For the shoulders, uh, you can definitely get them onto a T-pose a little bit better to an extent using those butterfly joints that you have on there. Speaking of them, you can probably get the arms to cross almost to across each other, which is awesome. Love that. It's a great range for this figure because it does use some great engineering as well. Bicep swivel, 360 degree rotation, no issue there, no tight joints, no loose joints or anything. And you can definitely do it on both of them as well. So there is that. Double jointed elbow, which looks magnificent. Just gonna get our range. So for the torso, you can swivel it side to side. Going forward about this much, not the greatest, but definitely not bad. And going backwards this much, which is really good, in my opinion. For the legs, oh, you can also move them side to side if you want with the, the waist. For the legs, you can do a perfect split because this is the 3.0 model instead of the 2.0 legs, which is awesome. Kicking forward more than 90 degrees, which is perfect. But backwards, you do have to move the leg a little bit to do a full-on kick backwards, but you'll get that weird um, angle because he does have sculpted butt cheeks, so that's one of his biggest issues. The, the tail is on a hinge and a swivel, so you can definitely swivel it around, putting it in whatever pose you want, and use the hinge to your advantage. So, yeah. No articulated wire tail, which I hope one day they can do that. Uh, knee joint. Pretty good. I think they could do definitely better nowadays, but it looks good nonetheless. 
For the foot, he can move forward about this far, backwards that far, swivel side to side, rock it a little bit, and toe hinge is not the greatest, doesn't go smoothly, but it works nonetheless. So this guy's articulation holds up pretty well in terms of figure standards for 2024 because this guy came out in 2022, 2022 or 2021, I don't remember, but I think it was 2022. Um, no, it was 2021. I'll put it on the screen for some reason. So this guy does hold up very well in my opinion. So let's move on to the accessories because for a figure of his price, he has a lot. All right, so in the accessory department, this guy is, again, not lacking in the latest, or in the least. I don't know English anymore. But this guy does come with a smirking face plate, a teeth gritting face plate looking to the side, very awesome, and a shouting face plate, which, again, is pretty standard for any Dragon Ball figure to have nowadays. He also comes with five different sets of hands, which is awesome. That's a lot of hands, really. He comes with two instant transmission hands, two key, uh, key blast shooting hands, or Kamehameha hands, two hands to actually hold the Kamehameha with the peg, two open uh, hands, and two fighting stand hands. And of course, the times 10 Kamehameha orb. Which also, which is pretty freaking cool. And it took me less than a minute to assemble. Please, third party figure companies, don't try to imitate Tamashi in these. Just make it easier for everyone, please. This is easy because Tamashi knows how to do them. You guys don't, please. Okay, enough ranting there. So again, he comes with a lot of accessories and honestly, it's a pretty good figure still nowadays. So yeah. So, leading on to my final thoughts, this figure is one of the figures that I actually did not give a number score because that previous video was actually a full video of just novice and me not knowing what I, what the hell I was doing at the time. So, based on what I've said during this re-review, I do think that this Goku holds up very well. I will say that the aesthetic of the, the character and the figure itself is absolutely magnificent and will would only be like pushed forward and stand out more if he was shaded from head to toe. So if there was a little bit more shading, like a uh, slight black wash on the fur and maybe the pants, it would look so much better. Granted, it won't be just like a random application of the wash. It would have to be applied in a certain manner to where it doesn't look bad, but the range of possibility and articulation for this figure is still absolutely perfect. It's pretty much the exact same as the Super Saiyan Goku that released a couple of months back last year. And honestly, it, he's just perfect. He stands up to that Goku pretty much toe to toe. So there is that. I'm gonna give this figure a nine out of 10. Again, that one minus point is just for the pain application. It's pretty lacking in some areas so that's literally my only concern of this figure now i don't know how available he is nowadays but i will say he was around 54 to 58 dollars or 64 dollars i think that was the base price at the time so if you're able to get him for anything less than that or around the same price i definitely do think that you should get him i know a lot of people are still getting him nowadays uh because he is quite hard to find uh, at, a, at a good price so there is that but yeah that is all the time i have for you guys today let me know what you guys think about this figure and about this re-review as well i would love to know your feedback and anything about this video that i could improve upon if you would like to do that so yeah i will see you all in the next one Bye bye